uh, I received, uh, thanks to the two churches that I pastor, a, um, a, a work computer. Nice, beautiful silver computer, brand new, got it all set up. It's working great, by the way, except for one problem. Within a day of it being set up, I got this message. I don't know if you get these messages. And it said, System Healer on it. I thought, that's great. I'm studying for this sermon. That was two weeks ago. I'm studying. System Healer, okay. It said there were 983 defects on my one-day-old computer. And these, these defects were affecting both health and speed. Okay. Of course, for a few bucks, the System Healer, if I paid, give them my, my credit card, would gladly fix all my computer's health problems. Now, if this two-week-old computer could get so sick so quickly, imagine all the disease lurking in human bodies. Oh, it's scary, all of your bodies and mine today. Imagine all those diseases that are lurking there. And we've only been around a few years. There are thousands of healthcare businesses and products that are branded to capitalize on our fears of disease and death. Healthcare is a big business, folks. You are daily bombarded with ads for vitamins, minerals, chemicals, and machines which will prevent flu, heal cancer, lose weight, and rich diets, count steps, and transform minds. Over $20,000 a year is spent to keep you well and heal your diseases. So I did a little bit of research, and I don't know if you would corroborate this from your experience, the average cost that we pay per, for our health plan out of our pockets is about 3,000 bucks. Uh, the cost your employers would pay would be about 12,000. So 15,000 for a decent health care plan. Um, and then there are the co-pays, I'm going to guess about 1,000 bucks a year. Is that, is that reasonable? And then there are the over-the-counter products uh, that we would buy uh, for our stomachs and what all, you know, vitamins and things that healthcare plans don't cover. I've thrown that about a thousand bucks at that. And then I found out that the U.S. government subsidizes, who they subsidize, I don't know, but they subsidize $8,608 per person, man, woman, baby, and child per year in the United States of America. So you throw that in, that comes to $25,608. So I just said conservatively, over $20,000 a year we spend. And my question is, do Christians spend less because they treat their bodies as God's temples? And if they do get sick, do they depend upon prayer as the first line of defense before popping a pill, health drink, or home remedy? Today, We'll study the lyrics of a popular song written by David to find out how God responds to people who beg for healing. Are you ready to be convinced? I hope so. Would you like to spend less on health care? Less than that 25000 Okay. Would you like to know and experience a God who absolutely loves to heal? You know there are people in this world that don't have any health care. And they seem to get along. I want you to consider this short psalm. And would you open up uh, your Bibles? But we will have it on the screen. And my Bible, here it is. Today's Bible that I chose to use is my daddy's old Bible. William W.H. McGee. I remember he used to preach from this Bible when I was a little boy growing up in Pakistan. And I was fortunate enough to receive it. It's in my library. So if you ever want to steal something that's really precious to me, go into my office, in which we have renamed the what? The gathering. the gathering place, because it's your office. It's where ministry happens. And just be careful. You can take anything, but don't take this one, all right? Because it's very precious to me. So my daddy's Bible, and he, of, of course, always preach in the King James Version, though we're using a different version on the screen. Psalm 30. Let's turn to it. You've already got it. He used to write in his Bible before that was popular, by the way. In fact, people used to nail him and say, Hey, Bill, what are you doing writing in your Bible? This is the Word of God. 
So Psalm 30. We don't know a lot of things about this psalm, but I would like for you to, ladies, would you read with Denise now uh, the headlines? And then, gentlemen, would you, would you read the verses? And we're going to read through all 12. David was depressed. I exalt you, Lord, for you lifted me out of the depths and did not let my enemies gloat over me. David was sick. Lord my God, I called to you for help, and you healed me. David was dying. You, Lord, brought me up from the realm of the dead. You spared me from going down to the pit. David sang. Sing the praises of the Lord, you his faithful people. Praise his holy name. David testified. For his anger lasts only a moment, but his favor lasts a lifetime. David experienced. Weeping may stay for the night, but rejoicing comes in the morning. David admitted. When I felt secure, I said, I will never be shaken. David affirmed. Lord, when you favored me, you made my royal mountain stand firm. David trembled. But when you hid your face, I was dismayed. David called. To you, Lord, I called. To the Lord, I cried for mercy. David reminded. What is gained if I am silenced? If I go down to the pit, will the dust praise you? Will it proclaim your faithfulness? David begged. Hear, Lord, and be merciful to me. Lord, be my help. David exulted. You turned my wailing into dancing. You removed my sackcloth and clothed me with joy. David promised that my heart may sing your praises and not be silent. Lord my God, I will praise you forever. Praise God. You do know that famous musicians, prize fighters, bigger than life heroes, and wealthy national leaders get sick. Julie Andrews lost her singing voice after a botched operation in 1997. Muhammad Ali suffers with depression after fighting Parkinson's disease for 30 years. No one, no matter how famous, is immune. David the songwriter, the singer, David the giant killer, David the folk hero, David the great king, got sick one day and almost died. Psalm 30 details how he survived depression, received healing, and cheated death. We don't know how old David was or when he wrote this song. We don't even know if he was living in a cave or a palace, if he was fat or thin. We don't know uh, what he was playing, what instrument he was playing. We don't know if he was rich or poor. But we do know that he was, first of all, seriously depressed. Secondly, very sick. And thirdly, almost died. David became a rich Jewish king. Contrast this with Mariam. I'd like to introduce her to you. She was poor, a Muslim, and a peasant. But her condition was the same as David's. Mariam, or Mary in English, couldn't conceive. Her mother-in-law cruelly taunted her by saying, you're not a real woman. What a tragedy that our son married you. He will never have a child because of you. Mariam became more and more depressed with every passing day. After a few months, she began praying daily to Allah to heal her womb. One night, she dreamed she saw a man in white clothes, and when she asked, who are you, he answered, My name is Isa el-Masih, 
That means Jesus the Messiah in Arabic, the language she spoke. Mariam, Isa went on to say, Allah has heard your prayers. You will have a baby boy in a few months. Sure enough, soon the neighbors were buzzing with excitement. Look, Mariam is going to have a baby. When she told them that it was going to be a boy, they laughed and said, How do you know? Because Isa al-Masih told me. Amen. More laughter. But they stopped laughing when the midwife shouted, It's a boy. Ladies, please convey Mariam's experience by reading together with Denise. I will exalt you, Lord, for you lifted me out of the depths and did not let my enemies gloat over me. Lord, my God, I called to you for help and you healed me. You, Lord, brought me up from the realm of the dead. You spared me from going down to the pit. Soon, Miriam was humming lullabies while feeding her precious son and watching him grow. Even though she was an illiterate woman, she was a sensitive mother. Something was wrong. Her little boy, named Sher, which means lion in her language, was crawling by now. But his legs dragged as he scooted across the floor. By 20 months, Mariam knew that something was dreadfully wrong with her precious lion and that he would probably never stand again. So she began a prayer vigil. She fasted, she begged, she praised, she persisted. She complained to Allah. You gave me a miracle, son, but why did you give me a sick one? A reasonable complaint, wouldn't you say? One night she dreamed, Mariam dreamed that she saw Isa el Masih, Jesus the Messiah, dressed in white. He gently spoke, Mariam, ask Allah for healing using my name. The next day she called her extended family. They gathered in her home and she brought little lion, her little lion, into the middle of the crowd. She said, we're going to pray for Lion, and when we're finished praying, he's going to walk. And then, Muslims don't pray with their eyes closed. She kept her eyes open, put her hands like this, looked up to heaven, and said, Allah, please heal Lion in the name of Isa el Masih, Jesus the Messiah. Everyone watched transfixed as little lion stood on his wavering legs for the first time and then started walking, trotting, running, jumping, all within an hour. Ladies, on behalf of Miriam, please read. Sing the praises of the Lord, you his faithful people. Praise his holy name. For his anger lasts only a moment, but his favor lasts a lifetime. Amen. Lion grew up and he became a Seventh-day Adventist lay pastor. That's where I met him in India a few years ago. He personally told me this story about his mother and about his legs. My job at that time was to train spirit-filled disciples as healers in India. God had given me a great education, fluency in Hindi and Urdu, and an amazing opportunity to spend four years serving the people of India and Nepal. I really could relate to David when he sang the following verse. Gentlemen, would you read it with me? When I felt secure, I said, I will never be shaken. Lord, when you favored me, You made my royal mountain stand firm. It was 10 p.m. Three men in a darkened car were talking in hushed tones. Crickets were chirping. A few dogs were barking. The CEO asked John, would you consider an offer to be my vice president 
for community health, to establish local churches as community health centers. Sorry. The chairman of the board added, we have no funds for your position. You'd have to raise all the money. We have no office for you, but we will provide a guest room for you to use whenever you're working in India. They talked a bit longer and John promised. Let me pray about this tonight, then I'll talk with Denise, and I'll let you know tomorrow. Opening the door of guest room number six, I walked inside, turned the light on, looked around, had never been there before, took my little carry-on bag, opened it up, got ready for bed, knelt down, and spent quite a bit of time asking God, should I be doing this for the next four years? Denise is living in the States. We were living at Auburn at the time. It would mean I'd have to be traveling back and forth and spend five or six months of the year away. It was not an easy decision, but finally, after a lot of prayer, I came to the conclusion that this would be what God wanted me to do. So I went to sleep. All of a sudden, I woke up, sputtering and gasping for breath, feeling something around my neck, squeezing the air out of me. Jesus! I croaked. I know what David felt when he wrote, but when you hid your face, I was dismayed. Jesus saved me. The grip loosened. I breathed. I cried. Gentlemen, would you read with me? To you, Lord, I called. To the Lord, I cried for mercy. What is gained if I am silenced? If I go down to the pit, will the dust praise you? Will it proclaim your faithfulness? Hear, Lord, and be merciful to me. Lord, be my help. Although I didn't use these words, this verse describes what I was thinking that night. I couldn't sleep. I said to God, come on Lord, what good would it do if I died here? That wouldn't do you any good. It wouldn't do your, your church any good, your people. I had no illusion about who was strangling me that night. Do you have any questions about who was strangling me? Was it an Indian? No. I almost put in the script Indian devil and Denise said, strike that. The devil is not Indian. And that's true. I know the great author was right when she wrote, when the name of Jesus is spoken with love and tenderness, Angels draw near to soften and subdue the heart. And we know, we knew that if the devil was willing to invade John's privacy in guest room number six at the Adventist hospital headquarters, and if the name of Jesus was strong enough to overpower Satan's killer instinct, that there was no other option for us than to say, Yes. Would you read with Denise and me? You, you turned, turned my, my wailing into, into dancing. dancing. You, you removed my sackcloth and, and clothed me with, with joy, that, that my heart may sing your praises and not be silent. silent. Lord my God, I will praise you forever. In the four years that followed, I stayed at least a dozen times in guest room number six. And I, can, I stayed with you the next time, and it was really hard. Yes, that's true. I can tell you that I was always a little nervous. And they had many guest rooms, but I didn't beg for any guest room. It's always, it was always guest room number six. So there was always a little PTSD before I closed my eyes. But fortunately, the Lord helped me sleep. And never again was I choked by the devil. Now if I come here someday and say, the devil choked me, then you better believe that there's something we're doing right here. 
That, that's the only time he gets mad. He doesn't get mad, really, if we're going his way. And I'm willing to be choked. And I think you are too, because you know that there is a name that overpowers the devil every time. Yes, you can croak it, you can think it, you can sing it, you can shout it. What is his name? Jesus. Jesus. And you do not have to be afraid of a nasty devil. Can you believe that? Yes. Dr. Jesus helped John recruit a team of health professional coaches who contributed over $2 million in cash and services. They collaborated with Indian counterparts to train thousands of disciples as healers who loved praying healing prayers. John and I are here to assure Amen. you that a system healer is available to Skagit County residents. God's not here to fix computers, but bodies and minds of those who may or may not use computers. Amen. It doesn't matter how many of your systems are down today, Jesus Christ has the capacity, the compassion, and the commission to heal you. Do you believe that? He does have the capacity, and we know he has the compassion, but he also has the commission if Jesus wasn't a healer, he wouldn't be doing his job. And that brings us to us. We're the body of Jesus. Have you been convinced? Would you like to spend less than $25,000 per year on health care? Are you willing to praise God by treating your body as God's temple? Will you depend upon prayer as the first line of defense before popping a pill, health drink, or a home remedy? And I can personally testify that today that was the case with a person who had an emergency at our church. There were people all through the corridors of this church either praying individually or together or silently. It was our first line of defense. 